Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Blackboard. My name is Katie Morris and I'm one of the faculty members with the Social Work Department. Again, this is a really general overview of Blackboard. It's very important that when you are getting into your Blackboard course um, that you explore kind of the different tabs here on the left side um, and see where the instructor put different materials. Every instructor is going to set it up a little bit differently and so it's really important that you become familiar with what that would look like. Um, so I usually welcome students with an announcement. This is the, kind of the first page that I use. Um, some other instructors might use like a home page. Um, I usually have students go right to the announcements page. This is where I usually post kind of some information, something that's going on that week that students need to be familiar with. Um, checking out here on the left hand side are the different tabs. Um, we're going to go to the start here tab in a minute, but I just want to show you the syllabus. So just by clicking on the syllabus, that pulls up the material that's located in the syllabus. I highly recommend um, that this is, happens to be an online version of the course. Um, no matter what course um, format you're taking it in, that you um, are printing the syllabi. So by clicking on the actual document, I'm running on a Mac, um, so the document's going to kind of download down below. Um, on a PC, it may say open or save file. You can certainly save your file to your do to the document to your desktop, but again, I recommend kind of having a printed copy. Um, the last few semesters, we've had power outages and many other things, and it's great to be, have quick access to the instructor's phone number, email, and um, uh, the material that is required for the course. So just a little tip there. So again, just by clicking on any one of these documents, you can access that. Another thing that I think is important for students to know is the Tools tab. Um, there's a couple of features that are in here. Um, the um, Send Email, so you can send an email to kind of all the users in the group, um, just the instructors, just the teaching assistants, um, some other students. Um, select users, so if I click on this, um, it will just pull up specific people that are in the course and I can just send them to specific individuals that are in the course. That's actually a nice little feature. I just got back by clicking tools again. Um, the other thing I wanted to kind of point out to you guys is your grades. I'm not going to actually be able to access this, um, but you want to click on my grades um, and you'll have kind of the layout of your, um, your grades for the, for the term and kind of what's in there. So those are a couple tools. Some of your other instructors might set up other things in here, um, um, wikis, discussion board, collaborate, whatnot. Um, but again, each instructor will do that differently. Um, the other part section I wanted to show you is the discussion board. I happen to use the discussion boards in my classes. And, um, you know, so to get in here, I have kind of these different things posted in order to say, let's get into the introductions. Um, I want to post a message in there. That's part of the um, requirement in my course. So just by clicking on introductions, you can see that there's already been a message posted. So I could just click on that to see what was posted. This was posted by myself. Um, and I can kind of read what I had written here. If I was a student and wanted to reply, similar to kind of writing um, an email message, thanks for letting me know, um, can just do that and click submit. You want to make sure you're clicking submit and not save as a draft. If you're saving as a draft, it's not going to be visible to others. So um, back here up at the top, I can kind of get back to the forum, the introduction forum. That's how I reply to a peer. If um, one of the requirements in my course is that students start their own thread, so create a thread is what you want to do and just label it um, intro by Katie Morris and whatever you're kind of wanting to type in here um, and then hit submit. Um, students have asked me if there's a um, spell check because there's sometimes students do a lot of um, typos. There is actually a spell check in here. Um, some students also happen to type in Word and then copy it in here. Again, different instructors kind of weigh this differently. If you're concerned about typos, you can certainly use the spell check button um, in here or you can type it in Word and copy and paste it in and just hit submit that way. So discussion board is an important feature of this course um, and that's kind of how you're using it, both posting um, things and also replying to appear that way. Let's explore some of the other tabs here. We'll go back to the start here tab um, 
and kind of review some features. So I've kind of laid out kind of what you need to do in the course. There's some video tutorials that I need you to watch, this being one of them, um, and some assignments to complete. You'll know if you just kind of hover over, you kind of get the signal that you can go into it. I keep all my assignments kind of in a folder that way. I'm going to show you how to do two things. One, how to submit an assignment electronically and how to take a quiz and or survey online. These are two features that might be used in Blackboard. Um, so in order to submit the assignment, I'm just again kind of you can see that this symbol means um, uh, assignment that you're submitting an assignment. Just hover over it um, and then click on it and it opens up. So it's giving you the instructions as to what you're supposed to do, um, the due date, and um, kind of the files. Now, I'm actually asking the students to open up this file, which it downloaded, complete the survey, because um, I'm doing a research survey, and um, then submit it here. Um, some of you might be writing, um, say, a formal paper. Um, another one of my assignments is an annotated bibliography, so students are having to submit a formal paper. So I would put, my name is, and maybe that's how I'd start the message. I'd browse my computer, similar to kind of pulling up, um, kind of open up the file, and scroll down. I could write additional comments, scroll down, and hit submit. So that assignment has been submitted, and you can tell here by reviewing the submission history. You just say okay. Okay, and the other option that you could do is, or another thing that might be on there is um, student assessment of a hybrid on online. This is just an example, again, of what an online quiz would look like. So here are the instructions and I'm telling it that I'm ready to begin. Some of these quizzes that you might be taking might be um, timed, so you want to make sure that you have the time to kind of do it. So yes, I've taken an online class before, kind of what you've taken, kind of filling um, in the blanks here. You can save your answers as you're going along if you're not able to take the whole thing at one time. Um, and if you're able to go back and open it again, you, you know, if the instructor has allowed for that and then certainly save and submit. Now it's gonna come up that I did all these incomplete, which is fine, I just wanted to give you an idea of what that would look like. And it's saying, okay, you've submitted the assignment. Now, a lot of students will say to me, oh, did you get the paper that I submitted? Oh, did you get um, the quiz that I took? Um, just so you know, um, a great place to go is back to the tools and the my grades. Um, you can actually see what you've submitted there. If there's an exclamation point, then you have submitted the assignment and it's kind of in the instructor's inbox and they're kind of in the process of grading it or waiting to grade it. Um, so that's how you know. If you're taking like an online quiz and it self grades, then the numerical grade should be there. So again, a great way to see that things are being submitted and that things went through is to actually go to tools and my grades. So that's kind of how you submit a quiz or do a quiz or survey and submit an assignment. Um, one of the things that I have kind of set up in the Start Here tab is, is that you guys are watching, again, the video tutorial like this. Once you, um, some instructors set up what we call um, adaptive release, meaning um, you need to perhaps review a lecture, complete a reading, take a quiz in order to get access to the next week's lecture or the next class lecture. I have set that up that same way. So if you have this kind of mark reviewed, you wanna make sure that you're doing, once you've completed the work, you check that mark reviewed. That way it gives you access to the next week's work. So again, I've kind of set up the Start Here tab just to introduce you to everything. The course documents is where a chunk of my material is located. So um, each week I have, um, for example, class one, I've set up readings, lecture, and if there's an assignment due, then you can access that. So the readings may be websites, they may be PDF files, they may be other kind of online material that I need you to review. Um, the lectures may be PowerPoint slides, they may be a, a video tutorial like this, or they may be um, some other um, sort of video lecture that way. Um, and making sure that you're completing the material as required um, by the due dates. So 
oops, <laughs> this is an old date, but um, please complete the material by the date posted, the, the time and date posted. Again, once we've completed all that material in there, clicking the mark reviewed will allow us access to the next week's folder. Okay, that's actually not working because I haven't really set that up yet, but the <laughs> class two folder would pop up if I had set up that feature. So um, that's kind of a good overview of um, each some of the features in, in Blackboard and in many of your courses. And again, um, spending time kind of in each one of these tabs, definitely in the first few days of classes so that you become familiar with where the instructor has put the, the bulk of their material and what the expectations are of the class. I think it's extremely important, especially if the course is online and or hybrid, that you become very familiar with the syllabus and you know what is expected of you and what you should be doing kind of for each of the classes um, overall in terms of the assignments, but also the participation that you're expected to be doing um, online. Uh, that concludes this tutorial. Thank you and have a good day.